good day and welcome back so we're gonna be looking at growing your slice with the built-in append function and we can of course learn what it is see some example and then kind of understand how it might be implemented we really see that if you have a slice and even though it doesn't take the full capacity or you can grow it to reuse that use up the extra capacity and when it doesn't have any capacity how a new slice can be created and it copies the existing members to you and return that new slice. And what a pen function does is allow you to grow a slice. And so what I've done is I've copied the example we started with, we were working on in the previous section. And so now we can, I'm gonna change things a little bit. So I'm gonna say here, my print area function takes a name, um, the name of the slice and it's a string. And so I'm gonna put that in here, uh, percent V. Um, and then I'm going to say percent V uh, um, has this value, has these elements. This is the length, the capacity. And so I need to just put N in here. And of course, this wouldn't work. So um, we don't care about the test score slice anymore. And I'm going to take this out. Um, bam. Uh, I'm going to make this one a string slice zero and I'm gonna say the same thing here as zero that as zero and um, okay this needs to be a string yep all right and uh, I'm just gonna move this up a little bit all right so we should expect to see and uh, what we're gonna call this is um, growing slices at runtime with the append function essentially. All right, so uh, yeah, this is gonna be size zero. Uh, let's do size zero. All right, so actually, let me comment on this. We're not there yet to modify this slice. Um, so, all right, first things first. Uh, we know that how this is going to be um, an empty slice because we just created and we didn't put anything in it. Um, it's nil. So we know that all we can do is S0 is equals to make, and we're gonna say make a slice of integer, come on, slice of integers, and we want it to have the size of, let's say, length two, capacity three. And now we can say, okay, now that I have my slice of length two and capacity three, I can say put in the first um, element, some number and the second one, some other number. And let's just do this. And so what do we expect? This is gonna print out now. Then we're gonna make a new slice. This is gonna print out our new slice with two elements, capacity three, and two of the elements are gonna be zero, zero because we didn't initialize it. We created that um, our underlying array and it's gonna be um, each element of the array is gonna have a, um, zero in it because that's the default value for int. And then we're gonna actually change those and then print it out. So let's see what this look like. So if I do go run main, exactly what we expected, right? Um, this is gonna be nil, um, zero length, zero capacity. Then we made a new slice, length two, capacity three, and these are two elements and a zero. And now we um, add those. Now we also know that since the, even though the slice has a capacity three, the length is still two. So we cannot do this and try to access that third part it's going to be out of bounds, right? And the length of the, the slice is still two. Of course, we can re-slice it. So we can say S0 is equals to S0. I'm going to re-slice it. And from the beginning of that underlying, uh, underlying array, because you could never go lower anyway, to the capacity of S0. And so capacity is three. So we're going to completely re-slice it. And uh, let me grab these two lines here. And then I'm going to do this. Uh, a little too far down. And then I'm gonna say two gets five or something. And um, of course, when I rerun this, we should see it all, my slice has grown and um, everything works fine. No problem there. So that is not really growing slices. That's exactly what you can do with a slice regardless if the underlying capacity can allow it, um, why not do it? Growing a slice though, um, like I said, we're going to use this built-in function. So let's take, take another look at how we can grow our slice to accommodate five um, 
using the append function. So if we do append, and you can see it accept a, a slice of some type, and then a number of parameters, um, values of that type that you want to append to the slice. And look at the return type. It returns a slice of the type you pass in here. And we're going to see why this is important that it returns this. So I'm going to reassign to my S0. I'm going to say I want to append to this slice, and I want to append the value 5. So I have a slice of int and the one of the value. But notice, since this function, um, when we looked at it, it's not showing up now, takes a variadic, it's a variadic function, means it could take a number of values that uh, of the same type. And we call variadic functions when we look at function in chapter 2. Um, so I could put multiple integers here, but we can just start with one. I want to revisit the idea that our slice up to this point the length is still 2, but here I'm going to try and append a third value. So notice and when we had to do that before, we had to reslice the slice and append that value, else it would have been out of bound. So let's see if this works. And of course we expect it to work, and so that is exactly what happened. We had the same result, except we didn't have to do the reslicing, and the append function did that for us. And so that works really well, so that's good. Um, what about if we wanted to append multiple values? So we wanted to put in that, 42, 81, and 63, for example. So now I'm trying to add four new elements to this slice. Now, my slice just has a capacity for three. That's important. It's already using two. So I have space for this five. We saw that just now. But what about these extra three? If we were doing this and we tried to reslice the slice, we still wouldn't have, you know, um, six elements. We'd still have a maximum of three because that's the capacity of our underlying array. So let's see what happens. And there we go. And we can see that oh, it actually um, returned us a new slice that is actually big enough, the length is six and so on. But let me do something else. Let me do it this way. I'm going to put, this is, I'm going to call this slice one, give it a new name. And here, I'm going to print out slice 1 and slice 1. So I'm going to print out both slice two and slice 0 and slice 1. And let's see what's happening. When I run this, and you could see, slice 0 was not changed. Slice 0 remained a pointing to some underlying array with three elements, but only the slice itself is 2. And then slice 1 got a new array whose length is um, 6 and, and the capacity is 6 and the slice itself is only pointed to the 6 element which is the same. As we know, um, what this tells us is that a new array was actually allocated. So it seems like this append function actually used the make function to create an all new slice, copy the existing element from the array, it's, the slice is passed in, and then it appends the other elements. So we can deduce how this um, append function works and write our own. And so that is what we're going to do. But before we do, let's just try to see graphically what might be happening. So uh, let's take a look at this. And so we saw that when you have a slice 0 and you... Um, for example, the offset is 0, the length is 2, the capacity of the underlying array is 3. We could picture it looking sort of like this, where you can access the first two elements, and that's where we assign those values. But then this last element is inaccessible. But when we call the append function with, say, a number, um, a one more element, what's happening is it's re-slicing that slice to say, I want the entire capacity, and if it exists, and then it's just simply assigns that element there. And that's why it needs to re um, sometime after we return it, is because, well, it's too early to say that now. But in this case, the array was big enough, and so you can just, the, the underlying array was big enough, so you can just reslice it. But if it had to allocate a bigger array, as in the case of, um, let's do this. In this case, where you have S0 and you actually want to add about three more elements to the um, underlying array, well, or in our case, four or whatever. 
Well, now you can see that it needs to allocate a new array that's even bigger and slice that new array. And then let's call that T array is the new slice. It copies over the existing values into that new array, that new slice, and then it appends whatever new um, elements must be appended. And so my calculation here is a little off. I need to fix these values, but um, these numbers. So this is uh, 2 plus 3, and then this is 2 plus 3. And so this is 5. So the new array is 5. I know in the code I use 6, but here I use 5 because it was going out the page and I didn't want to make these smaller. But you get the idea. Is I'm going to take in a slice. I'm going to see if it has enough, if the capacity can allow it to accept all the new members that are to be added, the three new members in this case. And oh, that's not going to be enough. I only have really space for one more, but I need three. So I'm going to create a new array that is big enough to accommodate the old elements plus the three new ones, so that's five. So I'm going to create a new array of elements, at least five, capacity of five, and I, the length of the slice is just going to be five, because that's all that's being added to the array. So even if I create the capacity to be 100, let's imagine, which is big enough, it's too big, but if it's big enough, I still can make the length five. The important thing is the length, and if there's some extra, we only start caring if the extra is too much. Now I can tell you that oh, for the, um, the way that the built-in append function works, it always grows them by an even number. Um, that's the next even number that's big enough. But that is not important. The important thing is that it's just big enough. All right. So now that we kind of see how, what's happening graphically is that first you take this slice. Okay, is it big enough? No. Allocate a new array. Copy the element into it. And then reassign that new value to uh, the new slice to the old one if you want to use the same name. If you don't, then you just assign it to a new name like this so you can still have reference to your old slice. But generally, you will see people use it something like this because they're just trying to um, grow that slice and um, return it to the, to the same name. All right. And remember, slice is just a value, so all you're doing is returning a value to some structure. That's it. All right. Let's take a look at basically the responsibility of any append function. And it seems to be is determine how many elements are being added to the slice. And does that underlying array have place for the new elements? And basically what you're asking is, if I look at the capacity of the underlying array for the slice, minus the length of this current slice, is that greater than or equal to the number of new members that I'm going to be adding to the um, slice? If it is, I could just re-slice that existing array and add the new members. If it's not, then I have to create another slice that is big enough. And let's do. Uh, is that Control Z? Um, and then uh, okay, let me just make it bullets. I don't know why it's... Anyway, I'll try to fix that later. Why is this one's coming out as dash and the other one is bullets? Anyway, and then copy the existing element over to that new slice. Copy the new elements to, this, to, the, um, to the new slice. Um, copy the new element to the new slice. And then, of course, return the updated slice. Right? Or return the new slice. Or the updated slice. Because suddenly you might be reusing the slice that you got. But basically, return that. And so once we see that, now we can say, what does a, a, an append function look like? Now we can see an append function here and we can certainly use it, but what if we wanted to do um, my append, right? Our own append function, what would that look like? And so let's write one. So font my append, we know that the, oh, my append must take a slice. So let's call it S as the input slice that it must take. And in this case, we're going to do, we're not as fancy as the built-in function that just says I can take any type. So we're going to restrict our my pen to work it on integer slices only. And then it's a variadic function. So the new element E, um, they're just going to be of type int. So E is a variadic parameter. And so, and then it returns, of course, uh, 
slice of integer, right? And so this looks like something like this. You know, if you just return s, um, it, it compiles, but it doesn't do what we want. If we run it, <laughs> whatever we pass in, we get back. And so that's not exactly who we want. All right. Well, let's go and try again. And like we said, from the responsibility, we know that one of the things we need to do is let's just print out some information, fmt, at print ln, and let's print um, s length, we print the, the length of s, and that's going to be length of s, and we could print out uh, the capacity of s. So we're trying to understand what's going on so you can see what is it that we're trying to do. And the other thing we can do is uh, we know that E, this parameter, is operates like if it's a slice slash array in that you can take the length of it. Okay, so let's do the length of E. And uh, let's that, uh, that save. And so we can see that S, the length of S is 2, capacity of S is 3, and then the length of E is um, 3 in this case. Okay, that's the length of E. So I updated the string. And what we really want to do is say, if the length of E is greater than the capacity of S minus the length of S, if that is the case, then I want to create a new slice that's called a T, and I'm going to make a new slice of int whose, cap whose length at least, I don't care about the capacity, I know if I specify the length, is going to be the current capacity of the previous slice, S, plus the new length that I need because let's say I'm appending to a slice that has zero capacity or zero length, right? Then when I say capacity of that, that means there's nothing existing in this, in the current slice. So all I need is this is capacity of S is going to be zero plus the minimum I need really for my um, new element. So I need a, to make a slice at least the minimum length being this. But if I have to copy anything, then of course it makes sense that I use the copy, the, the capacity. I could use the length of this um, as, as the way to go and it would still work because it's really the, the only number of elements I'm copying from S is whatever the length is and then I'm going to be adding this many. So I could very well use just the length of S. But I'm going to grow it a little bit more just in case somebody's repeatedly calling my append. If I kind of grow it a little bit more than the minimum it needs, then maybe the next time they call to append something, I don't really have to do a make. I'll just be able to add some elements. I will see that. So, and then four. We haven't covered a for loop yet, so you just have to take this on fate. But for, and then there's all your loop over. So you're creating a variable i, assign it to, to zero. And you're saying like, i, as long as i is less than s, right? So the length of s, so long as whatever element is in the, um, ex the input slice, I want to copy that over to t. So I'm going to say t that i is equals to s that i. So that's where the copy of the old into the new slice. Now notice, we only make it a new slice if the existing slice that's passed in doesn't have space. That is, the number of elements I need to add is greater than how many free, how much free space is in the input slice. How much free space is in the input slice? It's capacity minus its current length. So in our example where we had two and three, this is going to be three minus two is one, and one is definitely less than three because we try than four. So we're trying to add four elements here. So the number of things is greater. If I was trying to add one thing, then it would have been great. I wouldn't have to do this for a loop of creating a new thing. I'll do the next logic here, which comes as the else, right? Um, which is, if this is not the case, then do this. And so after I've copied this now, what do I have to do next? I've now copied the elements from S to T to this new slice. Now I have to copy these elements, the new elements, from E into the remaining of T. So that's where I can say for, you know, I is equals to, again, I create another variable. So that variable I 
here just works inside for this for loop. But this is a new for loop, so I can create a new variable. i is less than the length of e. So now I'm going to iterate over all the the e elements. Okay, remember e behaves like a slice and slash array. So I can iterate over, so I can get the length of e, how many extra elements, and I can iterate over those. And what I want to do is add it to t of length of s plus i. Does this make sense? Remember, s that length is 2. So I'm going to start from location 2 plus i, which is the first time i comes in, is going to be 0. So from location 2 of t, I'm going to assign that equals to e of i. So I'm going to take the very first thing in e, the first new element, and assign it to the first position after the old elements which I've copied over into t. How many elements I copied over into t? Length of s. And so that's why plus 0 is going to put me right after that. And then as I increment by 1 and so on, it's going to copy those new elements after. And then once I've done that, now I can say s is I can reassign s to be t. Right? And of course, since I'm returning s here, that returns the updated s. The other thing I can do is I can say else, if that's not the case, I can just say, let me resize um, S, regardless of if it's big enough or not. I'm just going to resize it to the length of current S plus the length of E. So I'm always going to resize the existing. Once I don't do this part, I know that there's enough in the existing S to accommodate these new elements. So in that case, I just reslice t. I must reslice s to get some new t because I may not have access to it. So since I'm trying to append, I may not have access to those elements beyond the length of s because I'm trying to append. So I need to reslice it using the capacity that's available. So I create a new slice t that reslices s in a manner that gives me access to those additional, um, the additional members of the underlying array. And then for that, of course, no, I don't have to do the copy, so I don't have to do this part, but I have to do this part. So let me just copy and paste that, which means I just have to append, now that I've resliced T, I just have to append the element from E into to T. And because T is pointed to the same underlying slice, that's okay. And then now, actually, I don't even have to do this part because, uh, well, yes, I do have to do this part because T was a resliced of the array, yes, so I have to do this still, and now I return s. And let's see if this works. Again, now we can see it all, it does work. s0 is still my old thing, and s1 is, is this, right? That's because I had to grow it. But it would have worked just the same if I was trying to just um, re-slice with, if I was trying to Reslice with to into the existing array. So if I did this, um, yeah, actually, uh, let's make this one. Yeah, yeah, I'll make this two. I'll call this two, two, and I'll call this yeah, S one. It doesn't matter. Okay, let's leave this as S zero. And here I'm going to call this S1, S1. I'm going to replace it with 1. So now I don't actually have to create a new, in this case, I don't expect my append to create a new, take this path, because there's one in space. So it's actually going to take this path. And we shall see that it actually points to the same array, not a new array. And um, did I print that out? Here we go. I printed it out. And I can do. Well, it wouldn't matter. I still will see that S0 points to an array that contains two elements, because that's the slice S2, even if it's pointing to the same underlying array. All right? So my append seems to be working. Now, I do have some repetitive code here. As you can see, I quite literally copied and pasted this part from these two places. So that tells me that I can actually pull that out and put it here. Um, well... I just duplicated the code. Um, 
I can pull this out outside of this for loop. And if I pull that outside this for loop, I could get rid of this. Now, if I get rid of that, it's complaining that it doesn't know what T is. Oh, well, that's fine. I can return T here. I can get rid of this. And then I can make T just a slice that sits out here. So var T is some slice of integer. And that sits out there. And then now I can just say T gets assigned a new slice if I have to take this path, or it, it's assigned the re-slice of this. And so um, now let's put some space to make this a little bit read readable. So this is my current logic. And let's see, test it again to make sure that it still works as before. And so I didn't introduce a bug. And yep, it is still working. So I can get rid of this. So we have just implemented our own append function. Of course, it only works for integer, whereas the built-in one works on integers, character slices, any slices. And there's a special case where it actually works on bytes of array and string. But we'll cover that later. Important thing is I show you how slice work, and then I show you a possible implementation of the append function. Uh, you do not need your own implementation because you can use the built-in one. This exercise was just to give you some insights into what it's doing and why you have this return value because you, when you append, you will be getting a new slice that has a sort of different um, view into that underlying array of the existing slice or into a possibly new array and therefore hence why you want to take that return value because if you don't then you're when you append you're going to lose whatever you don't lose anything from this slice but you would lose whatever that slice is that has the appended value all right so i hope that makes sense uh if it doesn't ping me email or put it put a chat and i'll try and explain this again with some more example and hopefully it would clear up things then uh if you haven't subscribed please do Spread the word. Thanks.